Hello, uh, this is Sadashiv Fadnis, Product Marketing Manager for Rubidium Signal Generators here at Anritsa. In this video, I'll be explaining Rubidium's capability to generate long pulse patterns using Pulse Train option 0025. Rubidium's Pulse Modulation option enables users to generate up to four pulses in a single pulse period each with different delay and pulse width. The pulse train option extends this capability. With pulse train option, users can generate up to 20, 48 pulse pers, each with uh, different delay and width. First, I'll explain conceptually how Rubidium constructs a pulse train. A pulse train is constructed from a series of pulse bursts. Parameters for each individual pulse burst, such as delay, high and low periods can be defined. Here, two pulse bursts with different delay, high and low periods are shown. Up to 2048 such pulse bursts can be defined. Further, each pulse burst can be repeated up to 65,536 times. When pulse train is enabled, rubidium concatenates all pulse bursts to make a pulse train. This is the setup I will use to show how to generate a pulse train. RF output of rubidium signal generator is connected to MS2090A Anritsu handheld spectrum analyzer. You can see that I have connected rubidium's pulse out and pulse sync signals available on the back panel to an oscilloscope so that we can see the pulse pattern generated. The ethernet ports of rubidium MS2090A and oscilloscope are all connected to my laptop through an Ethernet switch. This enables me to run remote GUIs for each instrument on the laptop so that I can control, configure, and display Rubidium's waveforms or RF output spectrum on the laptop. Here is my laptop screen with three remote GUIs. This is the Rubidium GUI. It pretty much mirrors the GUI on the front panel of Rubidium. This is MS2090A remote GUI. It also mirrors the GUI on MS2090 instrument. With these two GUIs, we have full capability to configure settings on each of the instruments. This is the oscilloscope GUI. It is not a fully functional GUI in the sense that we can't make configuration settings from this GUI. All we are doing here is accessing a page published by Oscilloscope located at its IP address. The Oscilloscope has a VXI11 server and a snapshot of Oscilloscope's display is published on that page every 10 milliseconds or so. This GUI on my screen here accesses that page. We are going to access this page whenever we want to see the baseband waveforms of Rubidium. So back to the Rubidium GUI. Um, I have my setup all connected and ready to go. Uh, and with this uh, Rubidium GUI, I can make settings to the instrument. So we are going to first set the frequency and I'm going to set the output frequency at 10 gigahertz. So frequency 10 gigahertz. We are going to leave the level at 0 dBm. I don't think we need to change that or we, we, we don't have to change that. Um, so once we change the frequency we are going to quickly check whether the spectrum analyzer shows us 10 gigahertz output and it does and it is also showing you about minus 2 dBm because of the loss because of the cable loss between 
uh, rubidium and spectrum analyzer there's a couple of dBs lost there so instead of 0 dB it's showing minus 2 dBm okay so having set the l frequency and the output level we go to modulation now the first thing uh, you do it usually takes you to the screen which is called the setup uh, let me go back again back off let me go to the modulation screen and and the modulation when you click on the modulation screen you will get to this uh, menu which shows you amplitude frequency phase and pulse and pulse strain and you have to click on pulse strain and that is it will take you to the screen and the menus that will help you set up the pulse strain um, so when you click on the pulse strain it will show you it will take you to the setup screen don't do anything on the screen yet uh, go to list first uh, now list is where you are going to define all your individual bursts uh, as I was mentioning earlier our pulse strain rubidium constructs the pulse strain with a series of bursts pulse bursts and you have to define the parameters for the pulse bursts so you can define the parameters right here on the GUI individually you can enter a delay you can enter a width and you can enter a low and you know the number of times you, you want it to be repeated you can do all this manually uh, but if you have a lot of pulse bursts like uh, 50 or 100 then it's going to be tedious for you to enter all these manually so in order to make it easier um, uh, what you can do is you can go to uh, you can you can define all your all the pulse bursts on an Excel and save it as a um, CSV um, and then um, then you can load it here so I, I have already done that so let me show you how to do the how to load the CSV file on here so when you go to load um, I have I have defined my uh, pulses my pulse bursts uh, on a file called pulse train 2 it's a very simple file um, Excel file um, and then um, I will import that or I will load this Excel file onto uh, Rubidium so if you press open then it will open up. I have two entries in that file and if you want to see what that file looks like um, I can show you um, and you can see it's very simple it's actually one entry for delay one entry for uh, the the on period one entry for the off period and one entry for the number of repetitions and you can go on adding <coughs> you know as many, as many number of entries as you want and then save it back for instance I can add one more entry here where the delay is zero and um, and let's say this is um, three or four maybe and then this one is again something different maybe one something like that and then I want it to be repeated once let us say so you can edit it like this and then you can save it back uh, save it as uh, on this PC I have let's say I'll save it as pulsestrain2.csv uh, save right so yeah replace uh, and then you can once it saves on the USB disk you could save it on hard disk too um, but I have saved it on the USB disk so we have saved it here and then you can load this file right so you can go back here load load the train to dot CSV file now you will see three entries right basically so you can do that and you can define any number of entries here up to 2048 pulse bursts um, okay but what we are uh, going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to basically define two here just to make it easier for us for demonstration purposes so I'm going to define burst number one 200 microseconds high 200 microseconds low and rep to be repeated three times so it's basically a 50% duty cycle uh, to be repeated three times right 
and then I'm going to define another pulse purse which is about, which is which is very very small narrow in width of 20 microseconds and then the low period is also less it's like 100 microseconds but repeat that 11 times so the wider pulses are going to be repeated three times and the narrower pulses are going to be repeated 11 times um, so this is the pattern um, and we are going to use this pattern right now one thing we have to do is to calculate the overall PRI period so uh, what you can do is you can add all the all the PRI period all the periods here to come up with the repetition interval so so we we, we know this is 1200 let me just calculate the bottom one that's much easier so 20 plus 100 so it's going to be 120 120 for each burst is multiplied by 11 times that gives you 1320 and the top 200 400 multiplied by 3 is 1200 so plus 1200 so that will give 2520 so that's your overall PRI so basically you just add this this multiply by 3 add this this multiply by 11 that gives you 2520 so keep this keep and make a note of this this is going to be your PRI your repetition interval or your uh, pulse period which is 2520 microseconds now let's go back to the setup screen oh it asked me to save this so yes apply and then go back to the setup screen and your PRI is where you're going to enter this number 2520 microseconds so that is 2520 microseconds enter I think that's it so once once you do that um, you can enable uh, the pulse pulse train right so once you enable the pulse train you can see the spectrum you know being pulse modulated uh, and then let's look at what the what the oscilloscope screen looks like let's refresh again uh, okay so now this is much easier to look at right so these are the three pulses each with 200 microseconds on and off period and these are very narrow pulses each one 20 microseconds high and 100 microseconds low and there are 11 of them right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 and then this again starts this is the beginning of your next cycle so uh, if you go back to the list and you can relate these two here right you can see what you are defined in the table there are three um, tw three pulses of 200 microseconds on and off this is 200 200 repeated three times and then you have 11 um, 20 microsecond on period and 100 microsecond off period you have 11 such pulses so that's your that's the what that's what you you generated with the pulse train now remember this uh, I have done it with only two pulse bursts but you can define up to 20 48 pulse bursts and you can define the repetition number up to 65,536 right so that makes pretty long pulse train potentially uh, now let's see what is happening in the frequency domain um, let's go to the spectrum uh, this is our MS2098 display and as you can see this one is because it's pulse modulated you know um, and now can so because pulse modulation is 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 a kind of AM modulation it's it is possible to look at uh, the pulse train here too by by going to zero span and that's what we are going to do here so let's go to frequency and let's do the zero span and that's your pattern um, and I'm going to sweep it once just to capture once you know we make one capture of the demon of the of the decoded output 
right and there you can see uh, even the RF uh, being modulated with the pulse strain because once you go to zero and uh, zero span it pretty much recovers that right so again if you go back here look at what we got from the um, uh, from the baseband output directly right from rubidium's baseband output directly to the scope three uh, wide pulses and 11 narrow pulses three wide pulses and 11 narrow pulses right and that's what you defined here too in that table so uh, so what you defined as pulse strain is getting modulated and we can see it recovered uh, here on the spectrum analyzer as well so this is the the demo this is a quick demo of the of uh, of the pulse strain you know how you can define a number of um, pulse strains on rubidium and you can modulate and you can see the recovered waveform